Like many countries around the world, Haiti has its own fair share of rich myths, legends and folklore. In this video, we are looking at the dark side of Haiti, 10 terrifying urban legends. Number 10, the legend of Thai Jean Petro. The legend of Thai Jean Petro is a popular folktale in the Caribbean, particularly in Haiti and Louisiana. Thai Jean Petro is portrayed as a charismatic young man with a devilish streak who travels from village to village offering deals to people that seem too good to be true. However, these deals always come with a catch. They require the signing of a pact with the devil. Once the pact is signed, Thai Jean Petro reveals his true form as a demon and begins to torment the individual who signed the pact, leading them to commit all sorts of evil deeds. In some versions of the story, Thai Jean Petro is portrayed as being particularly cunning, using his charm and wit to manipulate and deceive those around him. Despite his evil ways, Thai Jean Petro is often depicted as having a certain amount of sympathy for the people he tricks. In some versions of the story, he is said to regret his actions and to seek redemption. However, because of the pact he has signed with the devil, he is unable to escape his fate and must continue to torment those who fall for his tricks. The legend of Thai Jean Petro serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of making deals with the devil. It highlights the importance of being wary of those who offer something for nothing and to always be mindful of the true cost of any agreement. Number 9. The Jude The Jude, also known as the Gide, are a family of spirits that are deeply rooted in Haitian Vodou and Afro-Caribbean folklore. They are revered as powerful and revered beings who are associated with death, resurrection and fertility. They are also known to be mischievous, playful and often unpredictable. The Jude are the spirits of the dead and are believed to have a strong connection to the afterlife. They are often depicted as skeletons or as people who have risen from the dead. They are also associated with the cemeteries and are believed to be able to communicate with the spirits of the dead. The Jeed are revered for their ability to bring life back to the dead and they are often invoked during the celebration of the annual Feast of the Dead. The Jeed are known to be very social and are often depicted as raucous and playful spirits who love to dance and sing. They are also known to be very fond of jokes and pranks and they are often associated with fertility and sexuality. The Jeed are often depicted as wearing top hats, colourful suits and necklaces of beads and they are often accompanied by the sounds of horns and drums. In Haitian Vodou, the Jeed are associated with the Petro and the Raider nations of spirits. They are also associated with the colours black and purple and with the number 7. The Jeed are often invoked during ceremonies and rituals to bring blessings of fertility, health and prosperity to those who worship them. In conclusion, the Jeed are a fascinating and powerful family of spirits that are deeply intertwined with Haitian Vodou and Afro-Caribbean folklore. They are revered for their connection to the afterlife, their ability to bring life back to the dead, and their playful and mischievous nature. Number 8. Versailles Varsayan, also known as the Siren of the Sea, was a mysterious and deadly creature that lived in the depths of the ocean. She was said to be the most beautiful creature in the world, with skin as pale as moonlight and hair as golden as the sun. Her voice was like nothing anyone had ever heard before, with a haunting melody that would make any man fall under her spell. It was said that La Siren would often emerge from the water, singing her siren song that was said to be so enchanting that it would make even the strongest and bravest sailors lose their minds and follow her to their deaths. She would lure these sailors to their doom, guiding them to their watery graves with her hypnotic voice. The sailors would become so entranced by her song that they would follow her without hesitation, unable to resist her alluring call. Many sailors had warned others of La Siren's dangers, but those who did not heed their warnings often found themselves drawn to her voice and falling under her spell. The sailors who managed to escape her grasp would often return home with tales of horror, telling others about the terrible creature that lived in the depths of the ocean. Despite her evil reputation, there were still those who sought out La Siren, eager to hear her song for themselves. Some believed that if they could withstand her spell, they would be granted untold riches and wealth beyond their wildest dreams. However, these men were rarely seen again, and it was said that they met the same fate as the sailors who had fallen under her spell before them. In time, La Cyan became a legend, a cautionary tale passed down from generation to generation. But even to this day, sailors still speak of her, warning others not to fall under her spell. Number 7. The Loop Garu, a werewolf that preys on humans in rural areas. The Loup Garou, also known as the French werewolf, is a legendary creature that has been feared for centuries. It is believed to reside in rural areas and preys on humans, especially in the countryside where it is said to roam free. The Loup Garou is depicted as a powerful and dangerous creature, with the ability to change from human form to a monstrous wolf with razor-sharp claws and fangs. According to folklore, the Loup Garou is created when a person makes a pact with the devil, or when they are bitten by another werewolf. In either case, the transformation into a werewolf is said to occur during the full moon, 
and the Lupgar will use its powers to terrorize the people of the countryside. Many rural communities have their own legends about the Lupgaru. In some, it is said to be a vengeful spirit that is seeking revenge for some wrong that was committed against it. In others, it is said to be a curse passed down from generation to generation that is carried by those who have the misfortune of being born under a full moon. The Lupgaru is often portrayed as a terrifying monster, but in some cultures, it is seen as a symbol of power and strength. Some believe that it is possible to control the beast and use its powers for good, but this is a dangerous path as the Lupgaru is said to have a mind of its own and can easily turn on its master. Despite its fearsome reputation, the Lupgaru continues to be a popular subject in folklore and its stories are told and retold in various cultures. Some say that the Lupgaru is still out there waiting for its next victim and that it can be seen on nights when the moon is full, howling at the sky. Number 6. The Story of Papa Lagba, the Voodoo Spirit who serves as the gatekeeper to the spirit world. Papa Nagba is a powerful and revered spirit in the voodoo tradition, known for his role as the gatekeeper between the spirit world and the living world. He is revered as the patron of communication and is considered the mediator between humans and the spirits. Papa Nagba is said to be a tall, thin man with a top hat and cane, always dressed in red and black. He is said to be a friendly spirit, but can also be fierce if provoked. He is often depicted as holding a key, symbolizing his ability to open and close the gate to the spirit world. Papa Legba is called upon in voodoo rituals to help the practitioner communicate with the spirits and receive their guidance. He is believed to have the power to remove obstacles and help the practitioner connect with their ancestors and spirits. He is also said to have the ability to control the crossing of spirits between the living and the dead. In voodoo tradition, Papa Legba is honored with offerings of tobacco, rum, and sometimes money. It is believed that these offerings will help to appease him and ensure that he opens the gate to the spirit world, allowing the practitioner to communicate with the spirits. One of the most interesting aspects of Papa Legba's story is that he is revered not just in Haiti, but also in African and Afro-Caribbean traditions. In Haiti, he is associated with Saint Peter, who is known as the gatekeeper of heaven. In Africa, he is considered a trickster spirit and is said to be able to grant or withhold access to the spirit world. In conclusion, Papa Legba is a powerful and revered spirit in the voodoo tradition, revered for his role as the gatekeeper to the spirit world. He is considered the mediator between humans and the spirits and is honored with offerings of tobacco, rum, and sometimes money. Number 5. The Voodoo Zombie the voodoo zombie, a person who has had their soul taken by a boka and is now an undead servant. The voodoo zombie is a term used to describe a person who has fallen under the control of a boka, a powerful sorcerer in the voodoo religion. This person is said to have had their soul taken by the boka, making them into an undead servant who is compelled to do the boka's bidding. The voodoo zombie is often seen as a lifeless shell, devoid of personality or free will, and is used to carry out the boka's evil deeds. The creation of a voodoo zombie is a complicated and dangerous process, requiring a deep understanding of the spirit world and the rituals needed to manipulate the dead. The Boka must first capture the soul of their victim, which is said to be achieved through a combination of hypnotism, drugs and magic. Once the soul has been captured, the Boka can manipulate it to make the victim do their bidding, often using the voodoo zombie to carry out tasks such as revenge, theft or even murder. Voodoo zombies are often depicted as slow moving and lifeless, shuffling through the streets with blank expressions and no regard for their own safety. Some legends say that the Boka has complete control over the voodoo zombie, while others suggest that the victim may have some limited free will and could even rebel against their master if they could find the strength to do so. Despite the horrific reputation that surrounds voodoo zombies, many voodoo practitioners believe that the creation of these undead servants is a necessary part of their religion. They argue that the Boka uses their powers to help people who have been wronged, and that voodoo zombies are an essential part of this process. However, there are also many voodoo practitioners who reject the creation of voodoo zombies and view them as an abuse of power, an affront to the natural order, and a perversion of the voodoo religion. In conclusion, the voodoo zombie is a complex and mysterious figure, shrouded in both fear and reverence. Number 4. The Taimonis the Taimalis is a notorious spirit that has been known to terrorize villages and towns for centuries. It is said to be a mischievous and evil entity that delights in causing harm to innocent people. The spirit is said to possess people, taking control of their bodies and using them to cause trouble and wreak havoc. The victims of the Taimalis often become aggressive and violent, causing harm to those around them and causing destruction to their homes and property. People who are possessed by the Taimalis are said to have a blank look in their eyes and an eerie aura surrounding them. They often become completely unrecognizable to their loved ones and are unable to resist the spirit's influence. There have been many tales of the Taimalis causing chaos and mayhem throughout the years. 
In one such story, the spirit is said to have possessed a young woman, causing her to lash out at her friends and family. The village was thrown into chaos as the woman's violent behavior terrorized the people, until a wise healer was able to banish the spirit and restore peace to the town. Another tale tells of a young man who was possessed by the Taimanis and caused a fire that burned down several homes. The villagers were unable to stop the man from causing destruction until a powerful priest was able to perform an exorcism and free the young man from the spirit's grasp. The Taimalis is a powerful and dangerous spirit that is not to be taken lightly. Those who come into contact with the spirit are advised to seek help from a spiritual leader or healer in order to prevent the spirit from causing any harm. Number 3. Rames the story of Rames begins in a small village where he lived as a simple farmer. He was a kind and honest man, loved by all in the village for his generosity and good nature. However, his peaceful life was shattered when a group of bandits attacked the village, killing many of the villagers and looting their homes. During the attack, Rames was savagely beaten and left for dead. Days passed and Rames' body lay in the village graveyard, awaiting burial. But as the villagers gathered to pay their final respects, they were shocked to see Rames slowly rise from his deathbed. It was as if a powerful force had brought him back to life, and he was filled with an overwhelming rage and thirst for revenge against the bandits who had wronged him and his fellow villagers. Armed with his newly found strength and a fierce determination, Rame set out on a quest to track down the bandits and bring them to justice. He scoured the land, following any lead or clue that would bring him closer to his goal. He encountered many obstacles and dangers along the way, but he never lost sight of his mission. Finally, after many months of pursuit, Rames caught up with the bandits in a remote mountain hideout. He engaged them in a fierce battle, using all the strength and skill he had acquired in his journey. In the end, he emerged victorious, defeating the bandits and bringing peace back to the village. The villagers were amazed at Rames' bravery and the power he had displayed in his quest for revenge. They saw him as a hero, a protector of the village, and a symbol of hope. And as Rame settled back into his old life, he knew that he would always be remembered as the man who came back from the dead to avenge his wrongdoers. From that day forward, the story of Rames was passed down from generation to generation, inspiring many young men and women to stand up for what was right and fight against injustice. Number 2. The Legend of the C.A. Chual the legend of the C.H. Wall, a ghostly horse that haunts the countryside, has been a source of terror and fascination for generations. This spectral steed is said to be ridden by the devil himself, as he roams the land in search of souls to claim. The C.H. Wall is described as a dark and sinister horse, with eyes that glow red in the night, a mane that crackles with flames, and a hoofbeat that echoes like thunder. The origins of the C.H. Wall legend are shrouded in mystery, but there are many different theories about where the creature came from. Some say that the C.H. Wall was once a magnificent stallion, but after being ridden to death by its master, it became a ghost horse that roamed the countryside in search of revenge. Others claim that the C.H. Wall was created by the devil himself, as a means of scaring and punishing people into submission. No matter its origins, the C.H. Wall is said to be a fearsome and dangerous creature. It is said to appear without warning, and when it does, it is a sure sign of impending doom. People claim that they can hear the C.H. Wall's hoofbeats in the distance, growing louder and more urgent as it approaches. Those who see the C.H. Wall say that its eyes burn with an evil fire, and that its mane crackles with lightning-like energy. Despite its frightening appearance, the C.H. Wall is said to be impossible to catch. Those who try to pursue it always find that the horse disappears as quickly as it appeared, leaving behind only its ghostly hoof prints in the ground. Some say that the only way to escape the C.H. Wall's wrath is to seek refuge in a holy place, such as a church or a cemetery. The legend of the C.H. Wall has been passed down through the generations and remains a source of fear and fascination for many people. Some people even claim to have seen the C.H. Wall for themselves and swear that it is a real creature that haunts the countryside. Number 1. The Borka the Borka is a creature of legend known to the villagers who live near the dense, dark forests of the region. It is said that the Borka is a tree demon with roots that run deep into the earth and a trunk that extends high into the sky. It is said that the Borka is able to lure travelers into the forest with a haunting, melodic song, luring them deeper and deeper into the trees. Once the traveler has entered the forest, the Borka's powers begin to take hold. The traveler finds themselves lost, unable to find their way back out of the maze of trees and undergrowth. The Borka's roots twist and turn, tripping the traveller, making it difficult for them to escape. The air thickens, making it hard to breathe, and the trees close in around the traveller, trapping them within the forest. The Borka is not satisfied with just trapping the traveller, however, it is said that it feeds off of their fear and desperation, using its powers to torment them. The traveller hears the sound of the Borka's haunting song echoing through the forest, taunting them and making them feel hopeless. The traveller is lost in the forest, unable to escape the Borka's grasp. 
As time passes, the traveller becomes weaker, their will to escape slowly fading. It is said that the Barker drains their life force until they are nothing but a shadow of their former selves. The traveller remains in the forest, trapped and tormented for eternity, a permanent part of the Barker's realm. The villagers who live near the forest tell tales of the Barker to warn travellers to stay away from the dangerous and treacherous forest. They say that the Barker is a powerful and malevolent entity, not to be trifled with. Those who enter the forest are never seen again, and it is assumed that they have fallen under the Barker's spell. In conclusion, the story of the Barker is a warning to those who dare to enter the dark, foreboding forests of the region. It is a tale of caution and fear, reminding travellers of the dangers that lurk within the trees, waiting to ensnare them in their eternal grasp. With all that being said, what do you believe? Which urban legend disturbed you the most? What other Haitian urban legends could we have included in this video? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for joining us, see you on the next one.